Hello, I'm Luke Hindmarsh. And I'm Damien Humphreys. We are... In Deep Crit. Back looking at clerics. This is video number three. And we've previously dealt with... We've had to do two videos on clerics for the Player's Handbook. Now we're going to look at Xanathar's Guide to Everything, where there are only two divine domains, those being the Forge Domain and the Grave Domain. Capturing the idea of being that artisan, the creative life force spark that the, the gods imbue in Dungeons & Dragons characters. You are there to turn that creative spark into artifice, into things that will aid the world, or maybe control them. Um, starting off at first level, you are granted, no surprise here, domain spells. And here with the Forge Domain, they're, they're pretty they're pretty good. We'll, we'll come to that obviously in a minute, but we're looking at things like at first level, identify Searing Smite, um, looking at other cherry picks, uh, heat metal, um, protection from energy, wall of fire, animate objects. Uh, what else do we get at first level, Damien? Uh, so at first level, and well done for avoiding the word flavoursome there, Luke, by the way. <laughs> oh. Oh, and this. So at first level. <laughs> When you choose this domain, you will gain proficiency with heavy armor and smith's tools. And um, the blessings of the forge ability. So you gain the ability, as it says, to imbue magic into a weapon or armor. So after a long rest, you can touch um, a suit of non-magical armor or a non-magical weapon. And until the end of your... Uh, sorry, until your next long rest, or the unfortunate event of your death, if that should happen first, that object becomes magical... If it's a suit of armour, it gains a plus one bonus to its armour class. If it's a weapon, it gains a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. So you can only have one of those active at a time. And that's first level covered. On at second level, we pick up the Channel Divinity Artisan's Blessing. So this is using your Channel Divinity for an alternative to simply turning undead. Um, this allows you to create simple items and... If you've seen our previous video, this might be slightly reminiscent of the Creation Bard from Tasha's Guide to Everything. Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. I get them confused so easily. Um, <laughs> but, but it's slightly different. So here you conduct an hour-long ritual that crafts a non-magical item that has to include some metal. Uh, it can be a simple or martial weapon, a suit of armour, ten pieces of ammunition, a set of tools, or another metal object from the equipment chapter of the Player's Handbook, for example. Um... The creation is complete at the end of the hour. It appears in an unoccupied space of your choice on a surface within five feet of you. It has to be something worth no more than 100 gold pieces. And as part of the ritual, you must lay out metal, which can include coins with a value equal to the creation. This is quite important. We put the stress on the words lay out metal. And obviously the value is insignificant. Um, the metal is lost and transforms into the creation at the ritual's end. So it's um, even forming non-metal parts of the creation. It can be used to create duplicates of a non-magical item that contains metal. The example given is a key if you possess the original during the ritual. We'll come back to our interpretation of how that might be applied, um, but that's probably quite an, an important thing to consider how this could be used, and, and rules as written may not be super clear on that. Let me go over to you. At sixth level, you get the Soul of the Forge ability. Um, so you gain these special abilities. Uh, you gain resistance to fire damage. And whilst you're wearing heavy armour, you gain a plus one bonus to your armour class. Eighth level, Divine Strike. And we're familiar with this from going through the other domains. Um, here, it's 1d8 fire damage to the target. Uh, once on each of your turns. Um, when you reach 14th level, the extra damage increases to 2d8, as is standard. But remember, of course, that is now optional. You've got Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. You could be swapping that Divine Strike ability out for Blessed Strikes, um, which allows you to do... So you'd, you'd be swapping out the fire damage for 1d8 radiant damage. Um, you can't 
then scale that at 14th level. So that's the, the loss that you take. But that's a decision to, to, to bear in mind looking at that Divine Strike. What does that leave us with the Capstone, Damien? So the Capstone ability for the Forge Domain is Saint of Forge and Fire. Your blessed affinity with fire and metal becomes more powerful. So you now gain immunity to fire damage. And whilst you're wearing heavy armor, you have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from non-magical attacks. And that is the Forge Domain Cleric. Pew! Pow. <laughs> this is the crit for me. I'll say it straight away. <laughs> yeah. um, it is an interesting... Let's have, let's, let's, so let's have a look. Those spells... Those spells, baby. The Ooh. spell list is lovely. The spell it list is. is lovely. Um, I mean, it's got it's got animate objects on it. What's not to like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your hook's already just on animate <laughs> objects. Um, quickly doing level by level. All right, Searing Smite. I mean, there's no fucking to complain about there. But Identify is an interesting one because how often is that used in 5th edition? I've, I've seen people call it a throwback spell to earlier editions. But hey... Uh, okay, so we, just, we were playing in a friend's Curse of Strahd campaign last night, and we we came across an item that might or might not be magical. We don't know as a weapon. Uh, it's in a location in Curse of Strahd, without, without giving any spoilers. Where let's face it, we don't trust anything, <laughs> and it would be quite nice. I, I don't know about you. I am not attuning to that thing. Um, no, no. <laughs> I, I'm carrying it. You're I'm carrying it. I'm carrying it as a backup weapon. I'm not attuning to it. Um, mm, no. Unless unless one of the casters in the party would like to let me know that it's safe. Uh, yes. Yeah. But but if if you had a cleric who could uh, always have prepared, I mean, it's yeah. still going to cost a spell slot. But always have prepared identify. You don't have to be so cautious. So this is. I I, I can see the argument against preparing, spending a preparation slot on identify. Yeah. But but here you're given it. Okay. You can not like it or like it. That's up to you. But actually, it's pretty useful. Yeah, um, it's first level spell. It's yeah, pretty useful. In, yeah, to have it always prepared. Uh, going on at third level, you get heat metal and magic weapon. Uh, heat metal, another one of my of my favourite spells. Uh, very useful for um, combat control. You know, it causes yeah. damage, but it also gives disadvantage if that if the target can't easily get rid of the metal that you're heating. Uh, magic weapon. Again, oh, sorry, you, know. you have to use the example. You have to use the example of of, so, of heating metal on a on a creature. Go on. So, so <laughs> a, a bane of my role playing existence is minotaurs. They they seem to crop up and kill me every time. Um, but last time I came across them, I happened to have play, play, be playing a sorcerer with heat metal, and they were described as having nose rings. And straight away, I was yep. Yeah, let's heat metal on those. Um, <sighs> You know, giving them damage and causing them um, disadvantage on their attacks. You can imagine yeah. it. <laughs> Moo! <laughs> yeah. Go on. So, I mean, the other spells say elemental weapon protection from energy. They're quite... Yeah. Um, you know, and they, they can be used to... A buff spells are always useful. You can buff yourself. You can buff other members of the party, giving them that elemental weapon, giving them the protection from energy. Uh, fabricate and wall of fire. Wall of fire... Yeah fantastic battlefield yeah. control spell you know to, to either wall off a part of the battlefield or surround some enemies put a wall behind people get them knocked back into it you know that, there's so many uses for, for synergy with other spells, spells. Yeah. yeah and animate objects uh you don't like that one very much do you no it's <laughs> uh, oh, animate objects yeah throw yeah. 10 coins in the air and watch them go um yeah and creation is a, is a, a quite a useful spell um, very thematic, obviously, with the with the domain that we're that we're talking about. Mm. Yeah, I, I really like the spell list. Onto the bo I agree, I agree fully. Uh, onto the bonus proficiency, we've got this uh, proficiency with heavy armor. Well, what's not to like? Uh, and smith tools, which is is very f with that s uh, with that some word in it. <laughs> <laughs> It's good. It's good. It fits. And I, I suppose there's a degree to which your mileage may vary. Do you use downtime in your camp in the campaign that you're in? Um, how often is that going to be useful? Uh, certainly, in a campaign you've run for me, where I had a character who had proficiency with smith tools, I made use of it because I came across some suits of admittedly non-magical armor, but quite good quality armor that wasn't going to fit me. Um, but you allowed me to using the tools and the skill in them, the proficiency in them. To eventually reforge them into a suit that I could use, which would which save 
made the value of those items a lot more than they yeah. were otherwise. And it was fun. I felt that that was useful for me. That was, um, but it was also engaging me in the character's identity. Um, so yeah, I, I like yeah. it. As I think that's true with a lot of the tool proficiencies, apart from perhaps these tools, is yeah. how often do they come up? Does your DM allow you to use them? Um, I, as a DM, I personally do. I, you know, I like that downtime stuff. I like that rounding out of a character and yeah, yeah. yeah so creative and, play. Again, it's, it's it fits in with with this with this domain as, as a as a worshipper of one of the, the smithing gods. You would have proficiency. Blessing of the Forge is awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, what about yeah. scalability? Um, I think it's never not useful. I just use a double negative, but it's always useful. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, and we had a little chat about this, um, and I think it varies with the tiers of play. Yeah. So, tier one levels one to five, I would use the plus one bonus to AC. Yeah. Tier 2, I would use the plus 1 bonus on a weapon for attack and damage, um, because that's where you're starting to encounter those creatures that have creatures that have the resistance to yeah. non-magical attacks. Um, by Tier 3, you've probably got other weapons and abilities that can do that damage and better, so I'd move back to the plus 1 bonus to AC. Yeah. You're always going to be happy with an extra armor class, right? It's... Yeah. Um, within the bounded accuracy that, that 5th edition uses, it's always going to be useful um, and synergizes nicely with the 6th with the level ability. I think something to note about this, which might uh, curtail its usefulness, is how generous the DM is with magical items. So, Also, this can be used not just on yourself, but on others. So you can be giving the yeah. barbarian or someone else the plus one to their weapon. Uh, yeah. I think, so I agree with you about how to use it. I th there's sort of a diminishing returns from past tier two onwards, but it, it could still be useful. It could still make a huge difference. Um, I like the fact that you could, there are situations where you might lose all your fancy weapons for a bit. I mean, it's not unusual to end up captured or whatever because yeah. that's the story and you've, you're just having to fight with, I don't know, some rusty short sword. It's quite nice to suddenly go, well, it's now a plus one rusty short sword. Short sword. Yeah. Um, we talked about, because, you know, I'm that kind of player, I'd be like, well, couldn't, couldn't I use this on a, a shield? But it does say suit of armour, rules yeah. as written. So. Yeah, rules as written, it says suit of armour, and, and as a DM, would I allow it on a shield? Um... I thought I might do, but then you brought up the example of, you know, the DM's been foolish enough to give me a suit of plus two plate mail. Can I now add a plus one onto my shield? You know, and then we're looking at armor class of 23. Um, yeah. <laughs> maybe. I'd then just start using a lot of creatures with a lot of abilities that require saving throws instead of attack yeah. rolls. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, when you wanted to challenge me. I mean, yeah. you might, I mean, yeah. that's, uh, yeah. I mean I, so... so th you say that, and that, that you're also the kind of DM who allows someone who has a strength to make use of that strength. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but, 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 I'm, but I'm yeah, I get you. Get it's not, players, but... it's not impossible to challenge a player who's got a high AC. Is yeah. this? Um, Good to talk about nose rings. It's giving me an itch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh no, I don't have one. Thank God. Um, so, yeah, it's it's. I like blessing and forge. Artisan's yeah. blessing. I mentioned, but. College of Creation Bard, which seems to be a bit more powerful as an ability than this, albeit it comes in at third level. The value yeah. of the item you can create is less, but you don't require material components. Maybe they could synergize. Maybe a party with both of these could synergize nicely. I'm not sure. But this seems to be... The duplicate power is really nice. Yes. Um, um... But... Yeah, again, I think this depends on on your dungeon master um, and the leniency that that, that, that DM is going to give you. Um, yeah, um, I think I think it's I think it's useful. Um, it's certainly, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say I don't want it. Um, Use the channel divinity. You need to have the the metal. That is equal to the value, um, so could it be, could it be useful, locked in a jail cell to make some thieves' tools or or 
uh, hacksaw to cut your way out of the cell. Um, if they've left you with your gold, you might be all right, but probably yeah. you haven't got the gold. You, you haven't got the the metal on you. Um, yeah, we talked about couldn't you use the metal from the jail cell bars? Now, personally, I would say it has to be laid out in front of you, so you're com com having this ritual. Maybe you're sitting cross-legged or kneeling or whatever you're doing, and it's going to be occurring in front of you. You've kind of got to be casting spells over it. Uh, maybe I'm being a meanie. I might I might allow it as a one-off because otherwise you're stuck in a prison cell and there's no other way out, and it's inventive play. Um I don't really think yeah. in terms of rule of cool, but I suppose it falls under rule of cool. Yeah, I think it um, does. I think that this this can be this could certainly be used with rule of cool. Yeah. Um, quite quite often. Um, I think we we also thought about maybe making a wax mold of the key somehow, and then being able to use that wax model of the key or what a mold of it to, yeah. to use this. And again, it's adjudicate case by case. I'd have, I would say. I mean, over overthinking it, maybe you know, or, or thinking further, you know, maybe you need to get hold of a key, but you can't just steal it because the it would be noticed that it's missing. So yeah. maybe you get the guard drunk, and then you use this to make a copy of the key. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yes, absolutely. You know, so there, there is, there's plenty of uses for it, I think. Yeah, uh, tonight with, it's with, with a creative mind and a willing dungeon master. Yeah. Yes, a, d a dungeon master who's willing to say uh, yes, but as opposed to no. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> um, exactly. Soul of the Forge. Soul of the Forge, yeah. Mm. Sixth level. Tasty. Mm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Resistance to fire damage. Yes, please. Plus one bonus to AC. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Job Either done. of them alone would be pretty <laughs> yeah. cool. It's good. It's good. I yeah, like that. It's, it's, it's um, very good. Divine Strike, there's not a huge amount to say, except obviously yeah. gives you fire damage. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. see our previous comments about this every time it comes up, I suppose. Yeah. And the Capstone ability. Mm. Okay, it's not world-shaking in some sense. So looking at the second part of it first, getting resistance whilst wearing heavy armour to non-magical attacks may not be the greatest help at 17th level, but it's still pretty good. Yeah. It's still pretty cool. Immunity to fire damage. Ooh, wow. Yeah, immunity to Im immunity to fire damage. There's there very few ways to get permanent immunity to to any any yeah. kind of damage in the game. Fire damage is okay. Fire damage is one of the most resisted, but it's also one of the most used yeah. um, types of damage in the game, aside from the the the, the core three, as it were. Um, and uh, yeah, immunity to fire damage. Thank you very much. I can now walk across that pit of lava. Um, I can laugh in the face of the red dragon until it bites my head off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that that dragon's breath, taking that taking that dragon's breath full in the face. Yeah, no problem. Next, please. Mm. You said walk across a pit of lava, uh, which may well tr um, provoke some people to say, "Well, you'd sink into it," and it's like, sorry. No, no, physics, <laughs> physics, density of the human or dwarven or any kind of like organic body versus molten rock. You would definitely forged? warped. Now, that's a good question. Depends what they're made of. <laughs> and also, a different video, I think. Yeah, yeah, well, we could get into the <laughs> physics of this and be like, uh, depends on how much armor you're wearing and what it's made <laughs> of. And um, But, I mean, hey, this is. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to be swimming through lava, uh, but, no. but, you know, wading through it, walking on the top of it, all these things. Wow. Well, Wow, um, this is cool. So, I, I've already given away what I think of this. <laughs> this, this is good crit. This yeah. is without a doubt a good crit, and I know I know many people out there in the community also love this this domain. Uh, there's, good. there's so much to like about it. It adds it adds to what the cleric already does. It gives you a whole new range of options on top of what the cleric already does. Good crit uh, or the crit options. Sorry, the crit. Did I say good crit? You That's did, because we use a confusing scale. <laughs> Even we're confused by it. Well, I like it, but it's am confused. We're recording this video much earlier in the morning than we normally record videos. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm only a little bit into my third cup of coffee, so I do apologise. <laughs> the caffeine uh, levels are not high enough. Um, there's so, too much yeah, blood so... in my caffeine stream. Uh, <laughs> so I, yeah, I think because we, we did approach... We did approach this and say, is it good crit? Because questions about certain things, but actually analysing it absolutely is the crit. Um, this may not be 
I don't think I would agree if someone said this is the best cleric uh, domain. It, it's very good. It, obviously, it's the crit. Um, I think this... So this lends itself more to, what, frontline fighter and maybe a certain kind of support or spell-slinging yeah. battlefield control type cleric. Yeah. You're in, you know, life cleric uh, going in there and being the sort of the healer is equally good. Depends on... Yeah. Or great. I think it depends on what your... What is it you want to achieve as a cleric? What role you're playing? And if... If you've made the mistake of thinking that playing a war cleric is a good idea, but you're allowed to change to a forge cleric, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. That's that's how I'd approach it. Yeah, but yeah, this is this is the crit, absolutely. In the worlds of Dungeons and Dragons, and indeed in mythologies from this world um, and uh, religious. Uh, traditions. There are many deities that watch over the dead and the and the dying, and and watch over that transition from life to to death. You know, de deities such as Anubis and Osiris um, in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Kelimvor. Those those gods that watch over watch over the process, the processes of death, and. Worshipping those and very much carrying that into the world of your game is the Grave Domain Cleric. Uh, at first level, you're going to get the, the the list of domain spells. Um, some greatest hits on that one, Ray of Enfeeblement, Revivify, uh, Death Ward, Raise Dead. You know, there's, there's, some, there's some nice things on there. And then at Circle of Mortality at first level, uh, sorry, also at first level, you gain the Circle of Mortality ability, where you gain the ability to manipulate the line between life and death. So when you would roll normally roll dice to restore hit points with a spell to a creature who's at zero hit points, you instead use the highest number possible for each die. And in addition to this, you learn the Spare the Dying cantrip, which doesn't count against the number of cleric cantrips that you already know, and it now has a range of 30 feet, and you can cast it as a bonus action. Also at first level. Wait for it. Eyes of the Grave. Uh, you gain the ability to occasionally sense the presence of the undead. Um, because they are just insulting to the natural cycle of life. So taking an action, you, are, you, you can magically detect undead. At the end of your next turn, until the end of your next turn, you know the location of any undead within 60 feet of you that isn't behind total cover and it isn't prevented from divination magic doesn't tell you anything about the creature's capabilities or identity. Um, and the feature can be used a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier uh, per long rest. Yes. At second level, your channel divinity ability is a path to the grave. So you can now mark another creature's life force for termination. As an action, choose one creature that you can see within 30 feet of you. Um, and you essentially curse this creature until the end of your next turn. So the next time that creature is hit by an attack, any attack, the creature has a vulnerability to all of that attack's damage, and then the curse ends. At sixth level, you become the sentinel at death's door, and that allows you as a reaction, when you or a creature you can see within 30 feet of you suffers a critical hit, you turn that into a normal hit and any effects that are triggered by a critical hit are cancelled. Again, you get to use that a number of times equal to your Wisdom modifier uh, regained on a long rest. And and it can be noted it's, it's you or a creature you can see within 30 feet of you suffering a critical hit. So this can be used against anyone. I'll yeah. just park that there for now. <laughs> At 8th level, you'll gain the potent spellcasting ability. Uh, so you can now add your Wisdom modifier to the damage you deal with any cleric cantrip. Again, this is now optional with the uh, Blessed Strikes feature from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, which would allow you to add your Wisdom modifier to... Uh, sorry, to add a D8 to um, any damage of any Cleric Cantrip or um, attack roll. Well, that takes us to the Capstone ability at 17th level. Keeper of Souls, where you seize a trace of vitality from a parting soul and use it to heal the living. Somewhat necromantic sounding, that is. So when an enemy 
that you can see within dies within 60 feet of you, you can give uh, yourself or another creature within 60 feet of you hit points equal to the enemies that's died uh, number of hit dice. You can only use it if you're not incapacitated. Uh, you can only use it once per turn. It is not tied into any... Um, there's not like a limit on it uh, in terms of number of uses. It could be used every turn. It doesn't take a reaction. doesn't interfere with action economy. That's Keeper of Souls. That's the Captain Mobility. Where are we with Psychopomps, the Liminal Wardens, the <laughs> Grave Domain? Where are we with it? Where are we with it? Um... There's some there's some nice abilities in here. Circle of mortality at first at first level. Um, mm. This this is lovely as as an ability by itself. I get, I would give this the crit. Yeah. As if we were if we were rating each ability, which we're not, but in this case I am, and it's the crit. Uh, so the, this this goes into our our discussion we have about using healing spells. Um, it's more yeah. useful if you can guarantee the highest amount of hit points back um, to a creature. Um, and that, that's only the first part of this ability. The second part, which is spare the dying as a bonus action with a range of 30 feet. Yeah. Uh, and I've, we've had a um, we've had a great, uh, somebody play a Grave Domain Cleric in, in a campaign I was running. And this was used all the time. Yeah. All the time. And it was, yeah. it was, it was um, encounter changing. Yeah, because you know, people would go down and it'd just be right. Spare the dying. Yeah, done. Move on. You know, and I've, the cleric still had an action to go. Uh, yeah, that that's a really great ability. Um, Eyes of the grave, Luke. <laughs> Eyes of the grave. You get to do the really good one, and I uh, Eyes of the grave. Oh, so. <laughs> it's a running joke about oh so again in, in your campaign it, the player would come in and say is there any undead in here I'm going to use an action to see if there's any undead in here it's like uh, yeah, well we, yeah you can definitely see the undead over there I mean um, <laughs> we used I think you you quite kindly said I won't make you take an action to see that that's an undead as as a skeleton <laughs> sort of stumbles <laughs> over towards, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not useless it's not useless. There we go. Um, it's not useless. <laughs> it takes an action. You can only use it a uh, number of times equal to your wisdom modifier. Okay, so there are undead creatures that might be hiding or playing, d playing dead, uh, uh, lying <laughs> on the ground, pretending not to be, yeah. you know, animated. Um, there could be, they could be invisible. I think we talked about like shadows in darkness, or yeah. So yeah. You, there could be there could be a vampire passing himself off as as a human, you know. That in a social situation, you could be a, invited to a, the party at the strange mansion. Um, yes. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna open my senses and maybe discover that half of the guests are undead. Yeah. S a spoiler for Curse of Strahd. Uh, a certain <laughs> Count Strahd von Sarovich might might trigger this spell, but he maybe might, not. He might do. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah. I mean. Uh, okay, I mean, we, we laugh at this a lot. But it is uh, at first level in addition to yeah. spells and Circle of Mortality, which is Ace. So, yes. Yeah. Path of the Grave is nice. Um, yeah. Again, we've seen that used to quite staggering effect. Yeah. We've also seen it, uh, pardon the expression, I think I can say cocked up. Screwed yeah. up. I think, I think this up. is one of those abilities that... Um, benefits from a level of tactical awareness within the party. Um, yeah. So who is taking the next attack action when I cast it? And what you know, what's what's their damage capability? What are they likely to do without metagaming yes. it? But you know, if I'm if the barbarian's immediately behind me in initiative order, this is gonna be really useful. Um, yes. if it's if it's a sorcerer casting flame bolt. Maybe not so much. Maybe maybe not so much, but maybe. Firebolt, yeah, maybe. Flame bolt. Mm, Firebolt, um, yeah. Yeah, firebolt. Um, oh, sorry, flame bolt. Well, and it, you know, it would give it would give that creature vulnerability, regardless of their of their otherwise abilities. So if it was a creature that had resistance to fire damage, or, or indeed immunity. immunity to fire damage, yeah, for that for that one attack, um, yeah, you could. Which is that's an interesting point, isn't it? Because so I looked at this and I thought that would be like the way advantage and disadvantage works, where they cancel each other out, and then you're sort of set at that no advantage, no disadvantage. But that's not what this is set. This is no. quite. Rules as written, it you are getting 
giving them vulnerability, yeah. regardless of what they otherwise had. So that yeah. could be. I'm going to use. I'm going to steal your word. It could be clutch. It could be a clutch and of it, eggs. It could be. And, it could and be it's excellent. all of that attacks damage. Yeah. So if you've got a paladin using a using a divine smite. Yeah. It's vulnerability to all of that. So if you know if you've got that paladin who's using a using a great sword, um, thunderous smite, divine smite, all of that stacked up, that's all getting doubled. If yes. you're lucky enough to roll a critical on that. Wow. I mean you're I, talking stupid damage. Again, so long as the the, the, the rest of the part so it's like Bardic Inspiration, isn't it? Yeah. No, you could have just hit a different target. You've had to. Why do you want to double your one d eight damage? Oh wow! When we when the next guy in line or gal in line or whoever in line is going to whack it and take that guy, <laughs> take yeah. the threat down, and you wasted it because you didn't think. Yeah, it's like that. Um, potent spell casting. We don't need to say about anything about that. So we got Sentinel of Death Store as well. Sorry, as level. I've skipped over. Um, yeah. Yeah, stopping a critical hit. That can be that can be very useful. You're probably seeing what, yeah, particularly if you don't want the barbarian to take <laughs> to take down the, the target in one in one yeah. hit. Uh, <laughs> you think you've got a critical hit, you haven't anymore. So, apart from being the trickster player, what five percent of the time you're getting a critical? Yeah. We worked out, and or well, you worked out, and um, roughly, yeah. So we, I, I, most of our play sessions, we're seeing. A few criticals. Yeah. Two, three. Maybe it's more than that. Um, it's not the most overwhelmingly wonderful ability, but with the previous abilities, it's it's just that extra bit of protective. And it uses a reaction, so it's not using up your action or your bonus action. Um, you can use it a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier, which, you know, is by sixth level, I'm hoping you've got a plus four to your wisdom as a cleric, possibly Probably. a plus five. Yeah. You know, so you've got four or five uses of that. Um, yeah, and as an added ability, it's very useful. Like you said, we, potent spell casting, there's not a lot else to say that hasn't been said in all our other videos. Um, which, if you haven't watched, well, why not? Yeah, get on with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Keeper of Souls. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it doesn't use. A resource, does it? Does yeah, it so the good, the good things to say about this, it takes no action economy, it uses up no resources. Uh, it's a little bit of free healing. Yeah. It's a it's a little tiny bit of free healing. I mean, we, when we were looking at this, you know, I, I quickly looked looked at the, at the monster manual and, and grabbed a couple of monsters, you know, of, of CR17. Um, so we looked at the Death Knight and the Adult Red Dragon. Both of which have nineteen hit dice. Their hit, their type of dice are different, but yeah, they, it says the number yeah. of hit dice. Yeah. So that would be you or one creature could regain nineteen hit points. Um, I just, it's but just I mean really now. meh. It's not a. I, uh, this isn't a capstone ability. This isn't. This isn't, wow, I've got to 17th level, what's my amazing ability I get for surviving and building this character up to this level? Oh, you know, I can give you um, about the same hit points as a second level Cure Wounds. Yeah. So what we haven't what we haven't gone into in detail is the, the, the spell choice, which, um, like, and I think maybe it's an idea to go back and do that now, because I think there's a potential synergy, and I might be wrong about this, but I can see how it fits possibly with vampiric touch yeah but it's also a problem for me so first of all bane uh well we do we're gonna do cleric spells and yeah. bane would not be one that i would take yeah. false life gives you this gives you a buffer doesn't it so that's nice so you've got the potential to be a little bit close to the front line um but you're not really a frontline cleric you're quite a support cleric i think maybe i'm wrong about that but that's my yeah um, yeah, I think, uh, well, um, so it was, it was played as kind of a frontline-ish, well, no, second-line cleric. Yeah. Second-line... Uh, frontline support, fighter, sort of, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, vampiric touch is very useful if you are frontline. Yeah. Uh, it's not the most powerful th um, 
third level. It's a third level spell, isn't it? You're getting yeah. it at fifth. So it's not the most powerful third level spell, but it's pretty cool and it's getting you some healing back. And it, if you then go on and kill your target and use Keeper of Souls, if you've been using Vampiric Touch when you're 17th level, you might have done quite a bit of damage to it that you've then siphoned yeah. off some health. And then on top of that, you're getting 19 head points. Uh, but I think that if this this encourages you too close to the front line, it's not... I mean, clerics can survive the front line. They can. Yeah. Any of them can. Yeah. This is just not optimised for it. Does that matter? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's, it's got it's got some nice it's got some nice abilities for yeah. keeping the party in the fight. Um, You're too valuable to be on the front line. Yeah, that's my view. Yeah, um, those the, early the abilities. Soul, sorry. The keeper souls abilities. I'm just really underwhelmed by. And it's not yeah. bad. It's not it's actively not... bad. It's just it's meh. Uh, yeah. It could if it was like you can affect. I don't know, your wisdom modifier, or half your wisdom modifier of other creatures. It's not just one. Uh, it, or, we talked or, about this. Or half half that enemy's average hit points. Maybe. Spread out amongst the party, maybe. Yeah, spread out amongst a few people, you know, yeah. Maybe. I, I can, so, if this timed in where to take down the Death Knight, you had watched a member of your party get knocked down, then straight after that the Death Knight is killed and there are still other threats there and you've run out of all other healing spells it's quite nice to have just been like without, without having to use a healing spell without having to do anything pop that person who's on zero back up yeah that's very nice but again that's so situational um yeah, yeah so absolutely. Yeah. this this starts really strong despite eyes of the grave um <laughs> but for me, it gets weaker and weaker, whereas other domains either stay strong or improve. Yeah. I still like this, but it, for me, it's only a, it's good crit, but it's not yeah. like it's not even threatening to get into the crit, in my opinion. No, it's no, it's good, a, it, it's good crit, and you know, I, I said when we were looking at it, so circle of mortality as an ability is the crit. Yeah. Uh, Keeper of Souls is crit and miss. Everything else is good crit, so it balances out nicely into that into that good crit level for me. The spell list is is okay. Not doesn't doesn't knock my socks off. You know, it's it's I, okay. No, I don't, so what we said about the Forge domain, whether we said it or not, one of the things you did is you went through and you said, well, how many of these are actually on the cleric spell list, and very few of them were almost not. There's one yeah. couple maybe, but here some of these probably are already. Not all of them, but are they yeah. really, as you say, gentle repose could be good, but I've never seen it used, although I can think of times when it could be used. Having yeah. it as an option. Whenever. Have it as an option without without having to prepare it. Again, with River Fire and Raise Dead, the same thing. <laughs> having them there without having to prepare them can be useful. Having Death Ward always prepared. I, I use Death Ward a lot as a cleric. Um, it's That's a very good spell. Spells. It's one of the two spells that, that my cleric casts at the beginning of every adventuring day. One being Aid, one being Death Ward. If um, you were playing um, alongside a... So if you had a, a Grave Domain cleric and a Barbarian with the Zealot subclass, the Path of the Zealot, you yeah. would that would be a fantastic synergy because <laughs> yeah, the, you know once they get that ability to just pop back up with you know infinitely... Yeah easily free <laughs> race dead you could just be spamming race dead on them and it's like <laughs> great oh well you killed them never mind bang there yeah. we go again um so yeah it's it's not it's it's far from a bad yeah. domain it's just it's it's, it's good crit it's definitely, definitely good crit cool and that is xanathar's guide to yeah. everything probably because they they put so many domains in the player's handbook that they made <laughs> they us two two videos um we will be back with Tasha's cauldron of everything. Yeah, we will indeed. I, I'm, I'm still. Can you clarify this for me? If Xanathar's guide to everything is about everything, how come there needs to be a cauldron of everything? <laughs> oh no, I need to. Philosophical questions. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's. You have an cauldron, answer. <laughs> maybe it's Tasha's cauldron of everything else. Ah, <laughs> oh, that would just be too long. T T C O. I can't even spell. Uh, because see you next because time. Xanathar's guide to some things wouldn't sell. Yes. Santa's cast guide to this and that. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Touch maybe you, maybe. some other stuff. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we better go before we descend into. It's my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> Take it easy. Cheerio. Thank <laughs> you.